Last week, the Bank of England cut interest rates, which logically means your mortgage should get cheaper. But will it? Through all my research, writing and podcasts, I've noticed that investors often misunderstand the news, which causes them to make the wrong decisions and costs them a lot of money. And if you're taking out a mortgage at the moment, or you have a fixed rate ending soon, this is something you really need to understand. So let's break down how this rate cut will actually affect house prices and investors and what it means for your mortgage. So what's actually going on with interest rates? Well, let me explain exactly how this works, because to understand what's happening now, we need to go back to basics. The Bank of England sets the base rate, which is basically the fundamental interest rate that influences all other interest rates in the economy. It's their big tool to control inflation, where they're aiming for for around 2% per year. You can think of it like a tap controlling the flow of money through the economy. When they turn the tap down by increasing rates, it makes borrowing more expensive and saving more attractive. The idea is that people hold on to their money rather than spending it, which means less money chasing goods and services, which slows down price increases and brings inflation under control. This is exactly why we've seen such a dramatic change over the last couple of years. Interest rates shot up from nearly zero to more than 5% because inflation was completely out out of control, and the Bank of England, along with other central banks around the world, had to slam on the brakes. Now, in theory, when they turn the tap up by cutting rates, the opposite happens. It becomes cheaper to borrow and less rewarding to save, which should encourage people to spend and invest. If you're a property investor looking to expand your portfolio, lower rates means it's easier to make the numbers work on your next purchase. The same goes for business owners. When rates are lower, it becomes more attractive to borrow money to invest in new machinery or expand operations. But here's where it gets tricky. If the Bank of England cuts rates too far or too fast, all this extra spending and investment could end up sending inflation sky high again. It's like a constant balancing act. They need to cut rates enough to keep the economy moving, but not so much that we end up right back where we started with inflation out of control. And to be honest, while this might all sound perfectly logical on paper, the real world isn't quite so simple. Property prices, mortgage rates, business investment, they don't always react the way textbooks say they should. There are actually lots of other factors at play that can completely change how this works in practice. And this is something we've seen recently when it comes to house prices. In theory, falling interest rates are great news for anyone who owns property. When interest rates fall, mortgages get cheaper, and that affects the market in two important ways. First, more people suddenly start thinking about buying a home or investing. When rates are lower, the monthly payments seem more manageable, so you get more buyers entering the market. Basic supply and demand tells us that more buyers usually means upward pressure on prices. But there's a second effect that a lot of people don't think about. When interest rates are lower, buyers can actually afford to borrow more money for the same monthly payment. And sellers know this. They know that buyers have more firepower, which naturally supports higher prices. But this is where things get weird. Up until the last few months, interest rates haven't been falling. In fact, for the last couple of years, they've skyrocketed. And in response, something completely unexpected happened. Or rather, didn't happen. You'd think that when the cost of borrowing goes through the roof, house prices would come crashing down. After all, fewer people can afford mortgages, and those who can shouldn't be able to borrow as much given how high their monthly payments would be. Yet, the data tells a completely different story. According to Nationwide, house prices are only 2.5% lower than their peak in summer 2022. And if you look at Halifax's figures, they're now at an all-time high. Let that sink in for a moment. We've had one of the fastest interest rate rises in history, and house prices have barely budged. This is where it gets tempting to throw your economics textbooks out of the window. And I can tell you from conversations I've had with investors around the country, this resilience in house prices has caught a lot of people by surprise. But when you look deeper, you start to understand why. There are actually dozens of other factors at play, things like supply levels, wage growth, and even broader economic confidence. All of these can push and pull on prices in different directions, sometimes completely offsetting the effect you'd expect interest rates to have. But now, interest rates aren't increasing anymore. They're on their way down. And once again, that's not necessarily having the effect that you think it should, in particular when it comes to mortgage rates. So now the Bank of England has cut rates again, leaving them half a percent lower than they were at their peak. Does that mean your mortgage is about to get cheaper? Well, for about 20% of property owners, the answer is yes. But for everyone else, it's a little bit more complicated than that. Let me explain exactly what's going on. Around 20% of people with mortgages in the UK are either on tracker mortgages, which are priced at a set margin above the Bank of England's base rate, or on variable rates, where lenders can change the rate whenever they want, but generally follow the direction of the base rate. For these people, their monthly payments have already started coming down. But the other 80% of people are on fixed rate mortgages. Now, you might think that even though their current payments won't change, surely new fixed rate deals will get cheaper now the bank has cut 
rates? Well, not necessarily. And to understand why, we need to get a little bit geeky about how the mortgage market actually works. You see, when a lender offers you a fixed rate, they're not just thinking about interest rates today. They're trying to figure out what's going to happen over the next few years. And to protect themselves, they use something called the swap market, which is basically like an insurance market for interest rates. Say a lender offers you a five-year fixed rate at 5% interest. To protect themselves, they'll go to the swap market and find someone who will agree to exchange variable rate payments for fixed rate payments over those five years. If they can lock in a rate of 4% in the swap market, they know that they can make the 1% margin between the 4 and the 5, whatever happens to interest rates over those years. But here's the thing. Prices in the swap market are based on what the market expects to happen with interest rates. And the market at the moment has a pretty clear view about where rates are heading over the next five to 10 years. And right now, it's expecting the Bank of England to keep cutting rates. So if the Bank of England does cut rates exactly as expected, rates in the swap market and therefore mortgage rates won't actually change much because it's already priced in. The only way we'll see mortgage rates drop significantly is if the Bank of England starts cutting rates faster than everyone expects. But right now, the opposite is happening. The market is actually getting worried that rates might not come down as quickly as everyone thought. And there's one big reason for this, the budget. You see, in the budget, the government announced plans to tax more and to borrow more than investors and market analysts had predicted. And this has made investors nervous. When you're borrowing more than people expected, investors start demanding higher returns to lend to you. It's like if you've already got three loans and maxed out your credit cards. Anyone running a credit check on you is not exactly going to see you as a safe place to park their money. And they'll want a higher interest rate to make it worth their risk. So of course, this pushes up the government's cost of borrowing. And when the government has to pay more to borrow, it often needs to borrow even more to cover these costs, which can create a cycle that adds to inflationary pressures. And all of this extra government spending that they're borrowing for might also push inflation higher than expected. Think about it. When the government borrows and spends more money in an economy that's already running pretty hot, they're competing with everyone else for workers and resources. This pushes up wages and other costs, which feeds right back into inflation. And what does the Bank of England do when inflation is stubborn? That's right, they're less likely to cut rates as much as everyone hopes. To give you a real example of the effect this has, let's look at the five-year swap rate. A month ago, before the budget, it was sitting at about 3.8%. Now, it's jumped to nearly 4.1%. And remember, this is what lenders use to price their fixed rate mortgages. So what does all this mean if you're looking at getting a mortgage for a new purchase, or if your current fixed rate deal is coming to an end? Well, I've been speaking to mortgage brokers across the country, and they're telling me that based on what we're seeing right now, the most likely scenario is that mortgage rates are going to stay pretty much where they are for the next little while. On the one hand, you've got the falling base rate. On the other, you've got worries about higher borrowing and potential inflation, and it all balances itself out. But there's a good chance that we'll see better deals coming through as we move into 2025. And here's why. Banks typically have targets for how much they want to lend in a year. And while these aren't always aligned with the calendar year, many banks do work with January to December target, which can affect how competitive their rates are at different times of the year. So right now, lots of lenders have hit their targets for the year, so they're not exactly falling over themselves to offer amazing rates. When a new year starts and banks have fresh lending targets to hit, they often compete more aggressively for business. They might accept making less profit on each mortgage if it means they can attract more customers and hit their overall lending goal. This means it's possible that you'll be able to get a better mortgage deal, even if market expectations around rates stay exactly where they are now. But here's the thing, and this is really important for anyone trying to time the market perfectly. Any changes we do see are unlikely to be dramatic. Until we have another massive crisis, we're not going back to those ultra-low interest rates we were used to until a couple of years ago. This is where I see a lot of buyers fall into the trap of overthinking and aiming for perfection when good enough is perfectly good enough. They're sitting there thinking, should I fix now or wait a few months? Maybe they're on a variable rate and they want the security of fixing, but they're trying to pick the perfect moment. Or maybe they're about to buy a property and wondering if they should hold off for a few months to get a better deal. But here's the reality. It's impossible to perfectly predict what will happen with all the different factors involved in mortgage pricing. And even if you could, it's not going to make or break your investment anyway. If you fix now, 
Yes, there's a chance that rates might be a bit lower in a few months' time, but the world is unpredictable and they might be higher. What's highly unlikely is that you're going to miss out on some enormous drop in rates. But you also don't need to panic and rush to secure a certain rate because it's highly unlikely that rates will shoot up from here, unlike when rates were super low when it was inevitable that they'd go up at some point. So what should you actually do? Well, most people, and most investors in particular, prefer the security of knowing exactly what they're going to be paying. That's why they fix their rates, even if it doesn't end up being financially optimal. And to be honest, that makes a lot of sense. I do the same thing. If you've got a mortgage offer where the numbers stack up based on the price you're paying and the interest rate you're offered today, my approach would be to just go ahead. Because after all, the asset is forever, but the mortgage is only temporary. By the time you need to arrange a new deal in two, three, five years time, there's a good chance that rates will have come down. And even if they don't, your rental income will likely have increased, putting you in a stronger position. And then if rates do fall, that's even better. This is a great position to be in. Do a deal where the numbers work today, even if you're not punching the air with delight, and they're highly likely to be even better a few years from now. And I've seen countless investors miss out on great opportunities because they were trying to time everything perfectly when they could have just got stuck in and let time do the heavy lifting for them. But I've also seen people cost themselves crazy amounts of money because beyond just how rates work, there are countless other aspects of mortgages that 99% of investors don't understand as well as they should do, which means they lose money because they don't negotiate the best rates and they don't run the numbers properly on their deals. So check out this video next where I explain exactly how buy-to-let mortgages work and the big mistakes that investors don't realise they're making.